it's very much the latter. Uh, the changes to the car we've seen through the season so far are minuscule. Uh, the fin in front of the rear tyre, some, some tweaks to the fences in the diffuser. Nothing like the big update that everyone was predicting for Spain. Um, it's very much the car that they, they launched with and they're just learning to understand it better. Definitely understanding the tyres far better than, than Red Bull are and getting both the, you know, the, the chassis and the powertrain uh, working perfectly and it, it's paying off. Well, Red Bull had a really big update to the car in Spain. And this is uh, what I, I basically most what we see this year is what I'm calling a Z100 uh, update, which is just the very low part of the car, almost really just the floor ridge and the foot plates of the barge boards. Red Bull one was slightly bigger. They changed some aspects of the barge boards and the, the slats, the, what they call the Venetian blinds by the side of the side pods, and then made changes all the way down the edge of the floor. So it was quite a big update for them. And, you know, again, I don't think we're seeing, seeing the fruits of that necessarily. Um, you know, Checo didn't have the best of weekends and, uh, you know, you can argue about tyre strategy and what happened during the race. But I think fundamentally at the end of the day, the Red Bull is lacking a little bit on chassis and a little bit on powertrain uh, compared with the Mercedes. So they've got some catching up to do if they want to grab this opportunity for a championship this year. I think there's two key areas for them really. They, uh, I think they need to still find uh, more downforce, more efficient downforce obviously, to get these tyres working in the same way that uh, Mercedes are doing. I think this is one of the things we've seen, particularly in the race uh, where Red Bull just aren't able to work the tyres in the same way uh, as Mercedes are. And I think Honda, while they have certainly caught up and are right on Mercedes uh, heels with the, with the power unit, yeah, there, there's there's lots of debate. It seems to seems to flip flop between races. Is who's where where are they lacking and uh, who's ahead and who's behind? I think the general consensus now is that in terms of the combustion engine, they're both very similar, but it seems as though Mercedes have got slightly more deployment on their engine recovery system, which is quite interesting because as I said earlier this year, Mercedes were having problems with deployment on the straights in. Uh, I think it was Bahrain. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head now. So you know, there's there's lots of lots of things playing around there. And I don't get the feeling that Honda are just going to rest on their laurels this year. I think they will push. So I think it's more likely that Honda will introduce a step upgrade when they get that second uh, power unit on the car, um, rather than potentially big changes from from Red Bull on the chassis. It's, it, it's two aspects to it. Um, in terms of peak power, the, that, the cars only produce their full thousand and something horsepower when you've got deployment of the MG UK. And it's how long then can you make that deployment last around the lap? And that will vary by track depending on how and where they can recover. And what the drivers will end up feeling is when they do have that deployment in sort of part throttle situations coming out of corners, then they will you know, get that extra low end torque to get them out of the corners. And you know, by the time you get up to a certain speed, as much while as it's, it, it's important to have that extra horsepower, you don't feel it in the same sort of way. So it's very much on sort of corner exit where you're, um, you're seeing that. And it's quite interesting actually on the deployment point of view, there was some graphics of uh, Vettel in the Aston Martin, of course, with a Mercedes power unit. And he was at about 20% throttle entering a corner, which is almost kind of going back to the exhaust blown diffuser days. He's not doing that to get any exhaust effect. He's doing that because if you have some throttle on, you can actually use the MGUH on the turbo to slow that down. You're effectively kind of braking against the engine power and that's generating um, energy for the battery will get ready to go straight back into the MGUK as you go out of the corner. Lots of very clever stuff done with harvesting now. It's not as simple as, as you know, you're breaking for a corner, therefore you're going to get your K recovery. And then when you've reached your top speed on the straight and your wastegates would normally open on a turbo engine, that your H is then charging the battery. It, there's charging going on on corner entry. There's charging going on on part throttle as well. It's all very clever. And uh, again, it's a bit sad that the teams don't qu talk quite enough about this sort of stuff because it really is fascinating.
So this means that, um, that you get is basically clipping. So this is when that your, your battery, your energy has been depleted for that area and suddenly the car misses that 160 extra horsepower that the MG UK delivers to the, uh, to the car. So the red light just flashes just to warn the car in front that you've got uh, potentially a car that could be slowing down slightly.